Well, if you are someone with ADD or ADHD, or you live with someone who has ADD or ADHD, this is an episode for you. We are going to be talking with our guest speaker today. It is guest speaker day, and we are going to be talking with Jamie Nato. She is uh, someone who has more recently been diagnosed with ADD and ADHD, and uh, she has learned how to navigate life with it, uh, to to really figure out how to embrace it as part of who you are, and of course, with a great amount of humor. If you don't already know Jamie, she is hilarious. If you've not seen her on Instagram, you are going to want to follow her. Um, she has found a way to embrace this and also really to use it as an asset and to really um, manage it in such a way and live with it in such a way that um, it, it, it makes life it makes life amazing. And so I'm excited to have this conversation with her because I am someone who has lived with ADHD people and ADD people my entire life. So this was a great conversation. It's something that a lot of women talk to me about. Hey, can you help me with this? You know what? I brought in an expert who can. So make sure you are tuning in for this episode. I am so excited to share this conversation with Jamie with you. She was one of the speakers at my Simplify Your Holiday Summit. Um, and so we are talking about how to manage how to manage life anytime, but especially a little bit during the holidays too, when life is extra demanding. So if your life feels extra demanding, again, this is going to be the episode for you. So let's jump in and talk with Jamie. Well, hey there, I am Jennifer Roskamp, a certified life coach and homeschool mom of nine who is passionate about helping women just like you embrace the here and now while also being focused on creating the life you actually want. In reality, it's not about thinking life will get so much better or so much easier when you fill in the blank. Let's work on creating a life you love now. So let's dive in and get started on redefining Supermom to be someone who is present, intentional, and content rather than perfect in our homes, in our lives, and in our own skin. Let's get started. This is the Intentional Mom Podcast. Well, hello there and welcome. I am your host, Jennifer Roskamp, and I am excited to be here and bring you today, Jamie Nato. She is an author, a serial entrepreneur, and mother of four who believes ADHD is her superpower. Her new book, This Must Be the Place, Following the Breadcrumbs of Your Past to Discover Your Purpose Today is available wherever books are sold. So welcome, Jamie. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks so much for being here today. So we are going to talk about ADHD. And um, this is a subject that's very near and dear to my heart because I live with people with ADHD as well. So I, I love hearing insight from people who have a lot more expertise in this area than I do. So can you start off with us today by telling us a little bit about your journey with ADHD? When did you kind of start to wonder, huh, is this a thing for me? And what is this thing? And how did that kind of look for you? Well, like everyone, I get diagnosed by the internet first. And then you, you think, oh, you're watching a bunch of these videos and you think, that's that's kind of a coincidence or, you know, everybody's kind of flaky or flighty. And then after the eighth video, you're like, oh, this is feeling like someone is following me around with a camera and I can maybe get this checked out. So, I mean, that is, as funny as it is, the internet can be, you know, weird and annoying, but it can also be very educational. And so that is how I learned was on the internet. And then you can go you know, take the tests or do whatever that you want. Some of it is, I think for me, it's just knowing about it so that that shame piece is removed. Like, oh, okay, I'm not 
stupid. I just do things in a very different way than my neurotypical friends or spouse does. And and, you know, and you start to say, isn't this hilarious? You know, you're showing your spouse these videos and they're saying, oh, my gosh, that's just like you. And so it was kind of fun that we got educated together. And maybe I think it's more funny than he does because he has to live with me. But I'm like, you're never bored. You're never bored. <laughs> so true. As the spouse of an ADHD person, I can say every day is always something. It's always a new adventure. <laughs> There's some some little nuance that's a little bit different be- than it was before. So, um, so were you, you were an adult though, right? When you figured this out? Oh yeah. This was just, you know, like two years ago and I'm telling you just even saying, okay, I have ADHD and I don't think that my brain is broken. Like even to say that feels really liberating. And also I think it is offensive to people for me to say like, I think Having ADHD has been one of the best gifts of my life. Um, I know it doesn't feel like that all the time, but once you start to become aware, you start reading, it's like anything. You you listen to podcasts on it, you get educated, and your brain starts to make a shift. And what I'm good at, I don't know if everyone else does the Enneagram too, but I'm also a seven Enneagram and I'm good at reframing, but I I have to reframe or it gets like doom and gloom and I go down this like depression spiral. So I am constantly reframing like, okay, well, maybe this is a good thing. And how could this be good? And so just saying that, first of all, helps me believe that. And also saying that helps others around me believe that too. Like, oh, she's just going to do it a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love how you touched on the word shame because I, again, I I was married to my husband as an adult when he was diagnosed as well. And it actually, it was me reading a book and it was a quiz inside the book. Right. And I'm like, I took it, I took it for him and I'm like, Oh, (laughs) so I brought the book to him and I'm like, I I think you should take this quiz. It could be interesting. (laughs) So that's really how our journey started. But also the way that he described it when he was actually officially diagnosed is yes. I think he would a hundred percent agree with that shame thing. But he finally understood. He described it as, I kind of have an understanding now of why it feels like I'm swimming upstream every day. He's like, I I feel like you as a non-ADD person, you're just swimming along, right? Like you're mostly level, but I feel like I'm swimming upstream every day. So it was like, it was like that epiphany of no wonder I'm so exhausted all the time because I, I am seemingly working harder just to do similar things to what you do. Um, so, so yeah, he would a hundred percent agree with that as well. And then, well, you're just embarrassed too. Like why, why can you stay on task? And I'm so stupid. I can't stay on task. Or I always kept asking my husband, like, isn't your brain always thinking and going and going and going, you know, I'm having ideas, 45 ideas by the time it's 10 AM. And my husband is like, can you pick one and I can help you with it, you know, and it's good. It's actually a really good balance. I keep it creative and fresh and we're never bored, but he keeps me, I'm like a kite and he keeps me tethered, (laughs) you know, like I'm flying around and, and then he is holding the string, like, Oh, maybe we'll go this way now, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you describe ADHD as your superpower. We talked about it a little bit when I introduced you, but you also kind of mentioned it as well. Um, oh, and one thing I was going to say too, based on what, what you had said was I love, so labels, right? Cause you, now you're taking ADHD and you're giving yourself the label of superpower with it. But that's another thing. I think when you're undiagnosed for so long is like you said, you threw out the word stupid, like you are constantly attaching those labels to yourself. Yeah. Like they're just, they're completely the wrong label because you're not, you don't have the right one. So it's like, when you get that diagnosis, it's kind of a relief where it's like, okay, now I know kind of what label to put on myself, but then you've taken that step and and put the label of superpower. So can you tell us about that? Like what, how does that look? I, you know, when people say, oh, you're such a procrastinator, I'm a procrastinator, whatever. I thought, I kind of thought we were all doing that and maybe we all were in college, but I, that's how I've always worked even outside of college. So if you tell me that something is due, 
I have time blindness. It's not there until 24 hours before it's there. And even then I have to have like alarms to tell me that it's there, you know? Yeah. So, but even just having this not awareness of like people saying procrastination is bad. Well, in my experience, I, it made me get to work. I hyper-focus. I use my superpower of hyper-focus. I get it done and I get a really good grade. And I think it is annoying when you're working in like groups because someone always wants to do it before or, you know, and so yeah, there's some of that is reading the room, but a lot of it was just saying instead of like the label of bad, bad procrastinator, then I would say that's actually how I work. I need pressure. I need people to be depending on me. I need a due date and I can't just be out here like self-managing, you know, oh, I don't need a due date. I, I, you, if you don't give me a date, it's not getting done. Mm. So I, for me, I think that hyper-focus is a superpower. I will learn about anything new in 24 hours. I will be like an expert on it, you know, cause I went yeah. on a hyper-focus where I forgot to eat or pee and, you know, I have, may have a UTI, but I know how to do a surgery on a dog. No, but you know, it's just, I think we are able to access a lot of information in a short amount of time using the things that have been happening in our brain all the time. We are making sense and we are going 20 steps before you. So like, we know the end of the movie already by 10 minutes in, we can tell you what's going on, but that's because we've had to like live this way, you know, like what's coming up. I have to be prepared because it's not normal like everyone else. So I have really good intuition. You know, I think that's a superpower. Um, and, and I can get a lot of information. I can consume a lot of information in a very short amount of time and, and it stays. So I think that's helpful to know if you have a kiddo and you just can't get them or a spouse, like give them a due date, let them go at their pace, know that they will be out of pocket for 24 hours before that thing is due and let them work their magic. Yeah. And I think some of that is just stepping back and saying, this is how they work. Yeah. So true. As you know, as a parent of ADHD and ADD kids too, you know, I've lived in this world my whole life. Like even when I lived at home with my family, you know, my parents, my dad was ADD, my sister was ADD. So everything you're describing, like I've seen that whole time, you know, I've, I've seen that manifest in, in so many different people and in so many different ways, but you're right in the fact, I love how you called it magic because that really is what it is like, because I could not do that. <laughs> I yeah. could not get within that 24 hour window or whatever it is. Like my son is the same way. Like my son is um, finishing up high school and he's the exact same way. Like he oh my gosh, it gives me a panic attack and huge anxiety through the roof. I'm like, you know, you're going to get this done on time, right? You, you like, you know that like, and it's, and it's making me do this. And he's like, yeah, yes, I know that, you know, <laughs> but it's like, I could never do it. See, like for me, if I got to that point, I would run away, like burying my head and I would feel like I'm not getting it done. So I guess it's just not happening, <laughs> you know? And so I love how you call it magic because it really is magic. I mean, it, it is something that person, a person who does not have that brain cannot, cannot do. And I feel like cannot fathom either. And so I feel like, you know, when you're talking about a kiddo, right? Like just take that deep breath. I mean, like, you know, from one mama to, to maybe that mama, you know, take a deep breath and understand that giving them that freedom to do it on their own time schedule and to trust when they say, I'm going to pull a rabbit out of this hat that they're probably going to pull a rabbit out of that hat. <laughs> it took they me a while. Out. Yeah. It took me a while to figure that out for sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a funny, it's a funny thing to try to reframe because you've been told that procrastination is so bad, like your whole life, but I couldn't understand their brains. The people who are working on it two months before the month before weeks before I'm like, how, like, yeah. how are you doing that? So just as much as, I couldn't be forced to do that. You know, I wouldn't force you to say, we're going to do this in 24 hours. And you're like having a blood pressure spike, you know, like heart attack. Yeah, absolutely. Totally. I mean, that, that is what it would be like. So, um, so can you tell us a little bit about managing ADHD during the holidays? Because, you know, the holidays, I mean, we've, we've, we're talking about the holidays all throughout this summit and it just, it brings everything that we normally maybe have to grapple with and it just brings it to a whole nother level. And so I know that, you know, 
usually during the holidays, there's a whole bunch of extra things on your schedule. There's a whole bunch of extra places to go. There's a whole bunch of extra things to do and expectations and all that stuff. And so um, I imagine that trying to do this when, you know, trying to keep it all together when you've got ADD and ADHD is also a challenge. And then, so if you could speak a little bit to that, and I know you've got some hacks that you have found helpful that I know people will find helpful for themselves or the ADHD people in their lives that they love. Yeah, it's tricky. I would say, and anybody will tell you this without ADHD or with, it's just smart. But if you can, before the rush of the crazy, make like, what are our priorities? Like, what do we really want to accomplish? Do, do I want to do Advent this year or are my kids big? And, and it's, maybe it's going to be a personal Advent thing. You know, if you want to have that space, like I want to um, do these events. They're really special to me. This tradition is my favorite. I, I this is a priority for me. Um, and just getting clear about what is really important to me, what's important to us. And sometimes your spouse's importance thing will not be your importance thing, but you know, you're going to find a way to prioritize those things. So I would say get clear on what you want to see, because that will help you or your ADHD person be able to say, no, this doesn't fit in our priorities. And that is so helpful to bring clarity to the situation and, and say like, this is what you already said, because also ADHD people, it really needs to be their idea. So mm. you say, well, you already remember you said this. And then they say, oh, oh yeah, I did say that. And so how can I make this a priority? So those have been helpful. Boundaries have been helpful. Um, we put up a boundary of like on Christmas day, we are, this is when our kids are really little. We are not going to my parents and then your parents and then having, trying to have our own Christmas. It was, I, I did not like it. It felt like just too much. Mm -hmm. And so we put a boundary up that we would do Christmas Eve, you know, brunch and then dinner with the sides of the family. And then Christmas day would be our day. And that might not be fun for you, but a boundary was placed and that was helpful for several years and it switches, you know, and so you give yourself grace, but that is, is the number one thing. And then I would say something that really helps our brains is this hack. And it is there's apps now to help you keep up with gifts and what kid needs what I just find that my overwhelming ADHD person that they have to first get an app. You're putting like a lot of barriers in front of an ADHD person to get organized. And what you want to do is take away all those barriers. Yeah. And so a Google doc, just have a Google doc that everybody has access to the cousins, the aunts, the uncles, the grandparents. And I started this because I was forget. It's so embarrassing. You forget a kid because we have so many cousins and you forget a kid on Christmas Day. Like, I was like, never again. This is so mortifying. Well, I already deal with a lot of shame for not being able to remember everything. So we created a Google Doc, and it says the kid's name. You know, we do like a white elephant, or not white elephant, but we do a gift exchange because nobody needs to be buying 27 gifts for the cousins. Right. And it's a, and that's another hack. Guys, it's time to start doing some gift exchange. You draw a name. Well... You, and you're taking all these stacks that you are just going to hide from your kids and then re-gift to people all through the year. It's it's so stupid. But you're like, oh, you're a real fun killer. Um, no, I'm just saying make make your life easier. But it has the kid's name, the sizes that they're in, their things that they like. Here's a couple ideas of what they want like their age. You know, I can't even keep track of my own kids' ages and sizes. So everybody fills out their thing. And then when you're shopping, pull up your Google doc and you see like, okay, perfect. I can get this done Put or print it out if you need paper so you can put a little check mark by it. But I think those two things set me up for success because I'm not going to forget anybody. And I'm keeping my integrity. I'm keeping peace with myself. Like this is what's important to us. And I'm going to do everything I can to make this enjoyable for us i mean i have other things other hacks too i think it's this is gonna sound silly but host the event at your house if you're adhd host the event at your house this will bless your saddle because you have to clean up your pile you have to hang the pictures you have to do the things that you have said you were going to do for six months so i think it's a blessing to your family 
if you host the event and you just make sure that you delegate aggressively. Like you don't need to be also cooking all the stuff. Like if you're hosting the event, that's a free pass to be like, everybody else, you need to show up for me and bring all your casseroles. So I think that is, num- I, I love hosting it. My husband loves hosting events because I have to clean up my stuff. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is set a timer. Set a timer, 20 minutes. Anybody can do anything for 20 minutes. If you have an ADHD kid and they're dreading something and they won't get it done and now we're getting down to the wire and you're just going to say, hey, my expectation is for you to do this. I'm setting the timer for 20 minutes and that's all you have. I just need 20 minutes. And you can do that every day for four days until the task gets done. But we we can do something for 20 minutes. It needs to have a timer. Um And so that's what I do leading up to an event or if I'm hosting or whatever, like, oh, you're going to spend 20 minutes a a day on this thing until when you are actually hosting the event, everything's fine. So I thought you might have like a real structured list, but. Yeah, that was going to be my question is when you're hosting like an ADD, an ADD, ADHD person, when you are hosting, are you waiting till crunch time to do a lot of that stuff? And like the gifts, like, again, if that's kind of how things go, does that translate? So we kind of talked about that, like for like tasks and maybe school tasks and stuff, but does that translate to, are you pulling a rabbit out of your hat when you're doing stuff like that too? Sometimes, sometimes I am pulling a rabbit out of my hat. Sometimes I'll say, I'll put something on our calendar and it's me and my husband and we're going shopping at two stores and we are buying the rest of the gifts and we're just doing it during this time, but make it fun. So I also need it to be fun. So it's a date and, and we're going to go shopping and we're going to finish up all our gifts. So really doing something with someone is going to help you. Making it fun is going to help you, but it's, it's saying, you know, okay, Christmas is in four days, which I've done this so many times. Christmas is in four days. We have to go to the store. You look at your calendar um, tomorrow night and we're going to knock this out in two hours. I can do it. I can do that. It sounds fun. I need, I want to get it done anyway, but you can play those tricks on yourself, you know, two weeks before, four weeks before. I like having the Google doc list because when I'm shopping and I see a deal, I like having that ahead of time to say, oh, who do I have again? Okay. We have these four cousins. And here it's so easy. So, but yeah, I mean, there are a lot of times where it is just going to be like pulling the rabbit out of your hat and you're going to have to watch in total horror as we. But really what you're saying is I can trust you too. Like you can pull the rabbit out of my, you know, so again, it might me, it might make me as the spouse feel a little bit angsty, but I mean, I can say that about my husband. Like he will stay like he is good at pulling the rabbit out of the hat and he will stay up the whole, like he would rather do it that way most times. And he will stay up. Like if he miscalculates and he's like, Oh yeah, there's not enough time to do this. Like he will do it. Like he will stay up all night to get whatever it is done. And I would almost say, and I'm curious if you would agree, I would almost say that he does a better job when it is in that crunch time than when he is. I mean, like you say, those forced, things along the way. Like he can do them too, but I feel like it's more magical and it's the result is better when it really is in line with the way that he normally works. Yeah. You're, you're trusting them to, but like, honestly, they've had this for their whole life and they, they're, whether they admit that they have ADHD or not, whether they read books about it or not, they have hacked their brain. Like if you've gotten this far, I mean, I'm 41 or two, I'm not sure, actually, numbers are hard. But you know, if, if they've come this far, you, you have some hacks. So you know, I think also too, just, they need a lot of grace, because as far as dates go, and you know, Christmas happens at the same time every year, and it's still we're like, surprise, Jesus's birth, incredible, it happens at the same date every time, and we're still very surprised by it. But yeah, you know, a lot of grace for forgetting anniversaries dates I don't even know when my own birthday is it's a surprise every time my husband's like what do you want to do for your birthday I'm like what it's my birthday like it's incredible so you know we just 
you, if, if it's not an alarm, if it's not on the calendar doing the beep or the alarm, I don't even look at the calendar. So that's not going to help. But I live by alarms. I mean, I live by alarms. Yeah, that's an interesting. I don't know that my husband has tapped into that a whole lot. I might have to, maybe that's an effective tool to pass on to him or even like my son. I, I'm, not, I'm intrigued by that idea. So one thing that I'm sure you can speak to a little bit is what is one mistake that you see people make, or maybe you even made it yourself or the people around you made when they try to understand themselves, if, if they're the ones with ADHD, or when they try to understand others when it comes to ADHD, like what are some of the like things to avoid that maybe we could look out for? I think the biggest thing you can do, and we kind of touched on it, is understanding that brains just work different. So instead of it being bad or good or your way and my way, and, you know, there's this tension, there, it just, grace goes a long way in saying their brain works differently. And so that has helped, you know, like, my marriage so much for my husband to just, it's called radical self-acceptance. This is how it is. She is not going to remember these dates and I need to not be offended by that. So yeah. how are, how can I help her in these areas where it feels like I'm loving, but there isn't that part in my brain that can do that. And so just because it's easy for you, doesn't mean it's easy for someone over here, but having a lot of grace for each other, you know, and I have to do this with my husband. He needs a lot of time to process. He needs, it's, it's like slow, it's methodical. He thinks about it. And then the next day he comes to this conclusion. My brain is like rapidly firing. And so I'm impatient when you can't get to the place, you know, we need to be um, because your brain's not going as fast as mine is. And I don't mean that in like, I'm amazing. My brain is going really fast. I mean, it as in we process quickly because we've had to constantly you have to be one two steps ahead of the game so instead of being like just make a decision i now know oh he needs time and i need to be patient so we we wait it out until tomorrow and then we revisit this topic that i've already forgotten about by the way so it's i think just having that grace for each other and instead of looking at it as bad, like my kid has this problem, let's get on medication, which is fine if you need to get on medication, but this is God, we got to fix it. Instead of saying, maybe, maybe this is good. And maybe they are just going to be different than I am. I think it just makes parenting easier. I think it makes marriage easier. Um, and, and, and it makes even for me just to say like, hey, that's not your fault. Your brain could not contain that date or that information and um and i'm like the most gracious person when it comes to people forgetting things or canceling things or you know because i do it all the time <laughs> so yeah yeah you know you'll you'll find an adhd person who will be very gracious probably when you didn't remember something or you lost something we constantly lose everything so yeah one of the things I've heard you talk about, which I would love for you just to speak about a little bit, even for me as a non-ADD person, when you said this, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true. I love how you talk about your your bed being your recharging station. It's just too much stimulation. I was like, I'm overstimulated all the time. And so it is fun, but it is, and crazy, but it's also exhausting. So by two in the afternoon, I have process probably you know I'm reading two different books I've listened to like two different lectures for class I've uh I've made a new business probably in between there and you know started painting and so it's like we're doing so much and our brain is going so fast that I just my bed is my charging station and my kids know if I'm in there this is how I recharge I'm not mad at anybody I'm not like annoyed but I have to sit in here every afternoon recharge because I have a whole nother part of the day to like get through. So I call my charging station and, and everybody needs recharged and you shouldn't feel ashamed about that. You're human. Yeah. And definitely something to keep in mind. I know as we go through the holidays, when there is even more stimulation and there is even more, all the things, you know, all the more important it is to either recognize that in yourself that you're going to need this recharge time or to recognize it in the ADHD person in your life. So 
um, again, we tend to feel like that's a bad thing. Like you, you should be able to get through the day. Like what's wrong with you, but just recognizing that again, because when it comes to these things, your brain is going a thousand miles an hour to my 500 miles an hour a lot. So it stands to reason. It's like, when you look at it that way and you really understand, it's like, well, no wonder there's a crash, right? Like, and I yeah. can say that's for sure with the ADD people in my family. Like I can kind of just, I mean, I, I kind of ebb and flow, right? But I can say it's much more pronounced with the ADHD people in my life. Yeah. Or when they like blank out, like you're talking to them and they are visibly blanked out. Or you say, did you just, hear, did you hear me when I was saying that? They didn't. The computer got unplugged. <laughs> like it's unplugged and now we're plugging it back in. But it's just because their brain has to unplug for a second. It might be right in the middle of a lecture or in class or when their parents telling them to do something. So again, instead of saying, you're such a bad kid, why can't you just listen to me? Well, you never listen. Um, my husband has to say, do you want me to text this to you? It looks, it looks like you, you blanked out. And I'm like, oh yeah. Could you just make the, text me the list? Like where, what time do I need to be there? Cause he can tell me five times in the morning. I will have forgotten by the time it's five o'clock that night. So I think, oh, and I say it all the time. Can you just text that to me? Uh, and if you want to go over the calendar, I'm in a blackout. Like, I don't even know what you're saying. And his brain works very like he knows what he's doing in three days. I I wake up in the morning. I'm like, let's the adventure. And then I'm late to everything because I didn't look before. But he will text me the list. And I because I even forget that. Even though school pickup is at the same time every day, I sometimes get going on a task and I forget I have to be there. So hence my alarms. But uh, but also he, he things that you don't think you have to say over and over again, you really do. Like, what did you want done and what time did it need done by? You know, it's. Yeah. But he, we don't fight about it now. It's just like, this is how it is. Yeah. And it seems like the purpose that the alarms serve, I'm wondering if you can clarify this. The purpose that the alarm serve is that sometimes, and you never know when it's going to be that you kind of go into this hyper focus thing. Yeah. And so when you're in hyper focus, like you don't like what day is it even? And so the alarms help pull you out of in case yep. you're in hyper focus, right? Yes. Nothing exists if you're in hyper focus. If I am, it can go for organizing something, but usually when I'm organizing something, it really means I'm up here painting, but you know, it's something I can tell people. So I look like I'm a functional adult, but yeah, if I'm doing something creative, if I'm doing something I love, this could be studying. If I'm studying about something I love, I won't remember that the world is out here. I won't remember to eat sometimes. I won't remember to drink. So I carry, I hold a cup with me everywhere. And Stanley's are great for that. Like I hold a cup with me everywhere. It follows me everywhere. Otherwise I'm not kidding. I went through a season where I'm getting like UTIs and kidney infections because I'm I got so stuck on something, the current hobby, I don't remember what it was, or a current study that I didn't remember to drink. So it's funny. It's a funny thing that you have to do, like, to, but even like if you have an ADHD kid, ask them when the last time they took a drink of water is. Like, mm. your body needs fuel. Did you eat today? Did you eat lunch today? You know, or were you playing and, um, and handing them a piece of protein? I mean, it's, it sounds like we're squirrels that you're managing all the time. We, we do keep it really fun, though. I promise we're a good time. But <laughs> and there are things that you have to do. And now that I see it in myself, I can tell you, each one of my kids, I can tell you exactly, you know, oh, you're like your dad. You're totally functioning fine in your brain. Or, okay, we got an ADHD kiddo. So I think it's the awareness makes your life a lot easier and a lot less good and bad you know oh your brain is bad your brain is good because mine's normal and I'm like it doesn't need to be like that and we're missing out on a lot of strengths that ADHD has because we're so focused on like pushing them into this funnel that they can never get in yeah so good. One thing I ask everybody for is if there's like, okay, so for those who are listening and are like, oh my gosh, like, I think I'm, I'm like, there's like light, like I'm, I'm starting to understand about myself or I'm starting to understand about this person in my life, but wow, we've talked about a lot. So what is one like place to start? Like one out of everything we've talked about, like one quick take action now tip that somebody, if you're, if, the, if this is starting to resonate, where can they start? Where would be a good 
place for that? Listen, the best thing that you can do is full circle. The thing we talked about first is just get clear about what you want to do this holiday season and make it fun. Have it around the dinner table and say, guys, okay, discussion topic for tonight. What's really important to you? And you ask your kids. It's like a fun conversation anyway. Your kids are talking about, they're talking to you, which is always a pleasure. You know, sometimes they don't. And speak in full sentences. And you're hearing what your what your spouse really loves. And these are these are questions you aren't asking outright. And then it becomes in the middle of it, you, this fight. Because you just had two of you had different expectations and we could have avoided this by saying, hey, what's really special to all of us? And you have nine kids, I think you said. So you're yes. going to have a lot more fun. Maybe there'll be some overlap. Yeah, hopefully. Lord for that. <laughs> we pray fervently. But, yeah. you know, I have four. So there's six of us. So we're going to have six, six things that we want to get done. Okay, when are we going to get those done? And I lean a lot on my husband, too, to say, like, okay, here's the fun things we want. And now you put them on the calendar or tell, yeah. keep us, you know, tell us when we are going to do these things. And, and then everyone's not grumpy about it because they listen to their sibling. They listen to their mom or dad say like, this is really special to me and here's why. And then we're all on board in what's supposed to be like such a fun season. Yes, that, that's it, right? Like we can get ourselves with misunderstandings and miscommunications and unmet expectations. And it's so easy to do that. And then, yeah, we've sucked all the fun out of it and we've turned it all into fighting. So <laughs> I think that is a great tip. Of course, you know, with as many as who live in my house as do, like, you know, th there can be some serious misunderstandings and unmet expectations. So I love how you brought it back there and said, look, let, let's just start here. So that's, that's great. That's great. So thanks for, thanks for kind of bringing it back to that because, you know, as much as we talked about really important things here today, you know, it is about having fun, memorable holiday seasons that, um, that are filled with the things that matter to us and our loved ones. Yeah. So that's what better way is there to do that, but just make sure of how yeah. to get on the same page. So so much great stuff there, right? And man, is she not hilarious, right? <laughs> that was so much fun. What a great conversation to have. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, and I hope that you had a lot to take away as well. I think even if you're not an ADD person, um, I feel like we covered a lot of things that could be helpful for anyone. So I hope that you enjoyed my conversation with Jamie. So on the next episode, we are talking about clutter. If you are someone who struggles to get rid of things and you wonder, what is my problem here? I know that I would enjoy this space more if this clutter wasn't here. I know that I should be able to get in there and just take care of it, but I just can't. It is such a struggle. This is going to be the episode for you. So make sure that you tune into the next episode of the Intentional Mom Podcast. I will talk to you then. Until then, make it an intentional day.